Holland by M. A. Holland. Table of Contents. Chapter 1. Purchase of the Real Diamond. Chapter 2. How Frank and Marie met. Chapter 3. The Pot Plants. Chapter 4. The Stolen Car. Chapter 5. The Unknown Songwriter. Chapter 6. The Big House. Chapter 7, Ghost in the Townhouse. Chapter 8, Sale of the Real Diamond. And chapter 9, Final Thoughts. Chapter 1, Purchase of the Real Diamond. Our story begins... Before Frank met Marie. He lives in a big city on the East Coast with his mother and stepdad. He helps them run three apartment houses near the center of town. He earns his keep by collecting rents, maintaining the properties, and by doing household chores for his mom. Frank also was working as a movie theater manager in the center of of town, as well as odd jobs in the neighborhood. He was also writing songs whenever he had any spare time. He wrote a song entitled Real Diamond for his favorite rock singer, but was very disappointed when he found out that this famous rock star wasn't taking outside material. He wrote the lyrics to fit the title and he now decided to make the lyrics come to life by doing the things that he described in the song. He started saving as much money as he could to buy a real diamond for the girl of his dreams. Since his expenses were minimal, he was able to save a lot of money in a box. Months passed and the money started to pile up. During the first year, he saved about $7,000 and after three years, he had saved over $20,000, which was his goal. He would have had more money, but he gave his mom $100 a week to help her with household expenses. Since the savings was in cash, he kept the money in $100 bills so he could count it easily. You are probably wondering why he wasn't saving so much money before, because he didn't have the movie theater job until after he wrote the Real Diamond song. Now he has was ready to purchase the Real Diamond. He knew the jewelers downtown, so he started to see what he could find in his price range. He finally found the one he wanted. It was about the size of a quarter and was set on a gold band. He told the jeweler to make the ring size the size that he makes the most. Frank, Frank paid the ring off in about three payments. Finally, he had the ring and he put it in a safe deposit box until he found the girl of his dreams, which he thought was going to be difficult, until he met me. I would like to highlight a few things here. During the period of time he was saving the money, he was held up at gunpoint at the movie theater, his mother was very ill, but she recovered, and his car blew a transmission. Frank survived all these things to keep working and saving. One more thing I would like to mention here is that he never told his mother about the money that he saved to buy the real diamond, and she didn't have a clue. Remember, I am telling the story, and I didn't exist yet up to this point, but you will find out how Frank met me in the next chapter. Chapter 2 How Frank and Marie Met Now that he has the real diamond wedding band put away for safekeeping, 
All he has to do is find the girl of his dreams. He started to go to clubs and met different women that he dated, but they just didn't have that spark that he was looking for. His mom noticed this change in him and said, Son, what's bothering you? He said that I want to go out on my own and I don't want to be tied to your apron strings. His mother told him that whatever he wanted to do was all right with her. Frank went back to doing his jobs and saving money again. This money would be used for a nest egg for him and the girl of his dreams. Frank's mom talked to this guy who was a friend of the family about getting Frank a girlfriend. He said that he knew me for a while and that I lived alone and nearby. So he asked Frank if he could fix the antenna on my TV. Frank said sure. He took Frank to my apartment and when they arrived he said, Marie, this is Frank. And I said, I'm pleased to meet you. Frank got the TV working fine. It was a bad connection. I asked Frank, how much do I owe you? The friend of the family said, I will pay him. Frank gave me his phone number and he said, if you need anything done, just call me. Lo and behold, I called him and told Frank that my record player was acting up and could he come over to look at it? And he said, sure. When he arrived, he said, Marie, where's the broken phono? I showed it to him, and he said, I think you need a new needle. And he said that he would take the old one and get a new one in a couple of days. This was only the start of many visits to my apartment. He came back and fixed the record player and anything and everything that I needed fixed. I tried to pay him, and he just said, you can chalk it up to our friendship. Since Frank had a car, he took me to drive-in movies, dinners, and any place I wanted to go. I was falling in love with him, and he was falling in love with me. Months passed, and he, he asked me, would you like to meet my mom and stepdad? I said yes. He only lived a few blocks from my apartment. When we got there, Frank's mom was waiting at the door and said, I have been looking forward to meeting you and I heard a lot of good things about you and I hope that you will make Frank happy. She also liked the idea that I was a little older than him. Frank took me as much as he could to see his mom and stepdad. Then Frank started staying overnight at my apartment only on weekends. Remember, at this point of the story, nobody knows about the real diamond, including me. While lying in bed with Frank, he told me that his mother and real dad were both in show business, and his mother met his father at the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. They both worked the 1939 39 New York World's Fair as well, as carnivals, circuses, and expositions across the country. I asked Frank, what did his mom and dad do when they performed? He told me that his mother was a singer, an exotic dancer, fortune teller, and stunt motorcycle driver, and his father worked with Frank Buck as an animal trainer, he was a sideshow barker, and did stunts in silent movies, and... He was also told me that his father died when he was only 12 years old because of alcoholism and cancer of the throat from heavy smoking. He also told me that is why he doesn't drink or smoke. I told him that I didn't drink or smoke either. Frank then said, it looks like we are going to grow old together. I was getting to know Frank more and more every day. Frank asked me that if he got his own place. Would I move in with him? I said, wherever you go, I go. He said that he was looking at different places in the neighborhood. In the meantime, he kept going to see his mother and stepdad. Frank
Frank told me that he was growing tomato plants in his mother's backyard and that he had a green thumb. During one of our visits, he showed me the plants. They were taller than me. And in the center, he had plants that were green but no fruit. He said he is developing a new kind of plant. He said that he would explain later. The next night in bed, he told me that the plants in the center were pot plants, and he was hiding them with the tomato plants. I told him that he has a lot of explaining to do, and it better be good. Chapter 3, The Pot Plants. You are probably wondering what pot plants have to do with the story of a real diamond. I feel that this is the most important chapter in the book because this was when Frank decided to make me the girl of his dreams and give me the real diamond because I stuck by him when he, he told me about the pot plants. So the next night in bed, I asked Frank, why are you growing the pot plants? He said that he was trying to graft a tomato plant with a pot plant, and so far he wasn't having any success. Then I asked him, do you smoke pot? He said, no, I just bought bags of it from a guy at work, just for the seeds, and that when he grew the tomato plants, he threw the pot seeds all around the tomato plants, and when they started to grow, he weeded out the weaker plants. Then I asked him, does your mom know? And he replied, no. Frank, you know that we all can get in trouble if you ever get caught growing those pot plants. I think you better get rid of them as soon as possible. He agreed. Tomorrow is trash night, and we'll bag up the pot plants. The next day, I went to Frank's house and told his mom about the pot plants and that we were going to pull them all up and bag them up and put out with the trash. She was glad that I told her and loved me even more for convincing Frank to get rid of the bad plants. It took us about two hours to pull up all the pot plants. The next day all the trash was picked up and we were all relieved that we were all back to our routine. And guess what? Frank's mom made us a big dinner of spaghetti and meatballs, topped with tomato sauce, made from the tomatoes Frank grew in the backyard. And we also had a salad, you guessed it, with the tomatoes from Frank's garden. The meal was delicious. Frank's mom was an Italian and a good cook. Frank grew the tomatoes every year so that his mom could preserve them for sauce all year round. So the next night in bed, Frank told me that he was a songwriter and he had written several songs. Then I asked him, don't you, why don't you write a song about the pot plants? He said that he would call the song, Don't Let Yourself Go to Pot. Frank, over the next week, wrote the lyrics, and had George Liberace compose the music in rock style. When the demo arrived, he couldn't wait to let me hear it. The lyrics had nothing to do with pot. Instead, he was encouraging people to exercise, to get into shape, and so that no one should let themselves go to pot. When I heard the song, I was impressed how Frank turned something that was bad into something so good. The singer sounded just like his favorite rock star. I guess there's only one thing left to do in this chapter is to let you read the lyrics Frank wrote. Don't let yourself go to pot. You may think that you're headed in the right direction, but it would be better if you stayed put and strive for perfection. Don't let yourself go to pot, whether you're rich or not. If you really want to enjoy yourself at work or play, don't let yourself go to pot. Remember, you're as young as you feel, 
and give yourself a better deal. Whether you're a man or a woman or a child or a person who is just mild, it's up to you to decide what you're going to use as your guide. Look at your appearance every day. Do you want it to stay that way? Don't let yourself go to pot, whether you're rich or not. Exercise to keep yourself thin. The more you do it, the easier to begin. As the climate changes throughout the year, you should use your time to get yourself into gear. If you like to run, then getting into shape ought to be fun. It makes no difference, cold or hot. Don't let yourself go to pot, whether you're rich or not. Chapter 4, The Stolen Car A few months has passed since the pot plants incident. Everything seems to be back to normal. Frank is working as hard as ever and staying with me on the weekends. His mom and stepdad are doing well. Frank called me and asked me would I like to go to dinner at our favorite restaurant. I said sure. Then he said, put on your most beautiful gown, and I will pick you up around 8 o'clock tomorrow night, Marie, my baby. I'll see you tomorrow, Frankie. At about 8 p.m. the next day, Frank came to pick me up. He parked the car and came in to wait for me to finish getting ready. Frank said, let's go. I said, hold your horses. I will be ready in a few minutes. Finally, we left, and when we got outside, I said to Frank, where did you park the car? He said, right there in that empty space. I said, you mean someone stole your car? He said, you got that right. We went back inside, and Frank called the police and reported the car theft. Then he turned to me and said, how about trying this again in a couple of days, at about the same time? I said, sure, I will get another car by then. So a couple of days passed, and Frank came to pick me up. This time, I was ready. When we got outside, he said that he had a surprise for me. I said, Frank, there's your car. How did you get it back? I didn't. I got another one from the same dealer, except this one is better. It has air conditioning. He said, let's go. As we were pulling out, Frank yelled out, Marie, there's my other car. And he chased after it and caught up with it about eight blocks away. He called the police and they caught the guy. There was a newspaper reporter on the scene and he wrote what happened. It was in the paper. Next, I am going to read the highlights of the article, which will help me explain this part of the story better. My interpretation is as follows. This reporter happened to be a witness to Frank's stolen car. He said that he was passing by at the same time that the cops were coaching this guy out of Frank's stolen car. No fuss, no busted heads, no guns drawn. The old guy had a story. He told the cops he was drinking in the bar across the street when a man came up and offered to sell him a car. The cops checked out the bar. The guy who tried to sell Frank's car to the old guy made it out the back door. This old guy looked so harmless with stoop shoulders, thinning hair, glasses, and well-dressed, which made his story easy to believe. The reporter then says, you have cop cars pulling up to block the stolen car, an old guy who looks like a bank clerk sitting at the wheel, and Frank walking back and forth on the sidewalk, saying excitedly over and over, that's my car. The stolen car was the identical twin of the one that Frank had just gotten out of. This reporter went on to say that what happened was that in two days since his car was stolen, Frank had gone out, bought another car, etc., 
exactly like the stolen one. Frank was in his new car when he spotted the old one, and now his two cars were parked just a few spaces apart. I figured he must have loved his old car to have gone out and bought an identical twin so quickly. Reporter then writes, There was a point in the drama where I decided it was all over. The owner had his car back, a car thief had gotten away, and the old guy was in the clear. Luckily, the cops kept their hands on this old guy. They took him in for checking. His story fell apart. Frank contacted me and filled me in on some details about the stolen car incident. He said he wasn't fooled by the New York license plate that was put on his car after it was stolen. I knew my car, Frank said, and I loved my car. The new car Frank had rushed out to buy was identical to the old one, down to the 100,000 miles plus both had on the speedometers. The wind-up is that Frank got his old car back. He sold it to the same dealer he bought the twin from. This reporter closes the article by saying that 10 days later, the old guy was arrested again and charged with stealing another car. Next is what happened when Frank sold the stolen car back to the dealer. Frank asked me, do I know how to drive? I said, yes. So Frank drove the stolen car to the dealer, and I followed him in the identical twin. After the transaction was completed, I drove him home, and Frank told me to be ready at 8 p.m. the next day to go out on the town. Frank picked me up at my apartment at 8 p.m. sharp. We went to our favorite restaurant. After we finished our meal, Frank told me to close my eyes and put out my hand and on my finger he placed a real diamond wedding band. When I opened my eyes, I couldn't believe what I saw. A wedding band with a large diamond in the center. I asked Frank, is that a real diamond? And he said, you got that right. I couldn't believe it. I asked him, how did you know my ring size? He told me when he bought the real diamond, he told the jeweler to make it the size that he makes the most. I know now that you are the girl of my dreams, because the ring fits you perfect. I told Frank, I want to wear it all the time. I love it so much. But he said, it's gon not going to be safe to do that. This will have to be kept in a safe deposit box because of the value. I asked Frank, how many carrots does this wedding band have? He whispered in my ear. $20,000 worth of carrots. I asked him, where did you get the money to pay for it? He told me that it took him three years to save the money, and he cannot tell anybody about the real diamond, that it has to be our secret. I told him, I want to wear it. He told me that he has a way that I could wear it. He said that he was going back to the jeweler and have him make the same wedding band and size with a fake diamond. We left the restaurant and went back to my apartment and went to bed. Frank put the real diamond away until the fake one was done. When it was finished, he brought it to me and I tried it on and it fit perfect and was identical to the real one. I asked Frank, how are we going to tell them apart? He said, a real diamond can cut glass. A fake one can't because it's made of glass. In my heart, I knew that Frank really loved me and wanted to make me happy. Frank took the real diamond and put it in the safe deposit box at the bank. He told me what bank and gave me the key. He said that if we ever needed money, we can use the real diamond to help us. I told Frank that what he did, I think, did he ever think of writing a song entitled Real Diamond? He said yes, he already has the lyrics completed and was going to send it out to George Liberace to do the music in rock style. I couldn't wait to hear it. He said he will bring it to me as soon as everything is done. In a few weeks, the demo arrived 
When he played the song for me, I was so surprised of the way he made the lyrics tell the story of how we went to dine and he gave me the ring and the following is the lyrics of Real Diamond. Real Diamond. If I had a real diamond, I'd be rich as I could be. But if I had your love, that would be enough for me. Whenever I look at you, your eyes sparkle like a star. It lets me see you, whether near or far. A real diamond may go from hand to hand, but the love I have for you would be the same in any land. Put on your most beautiful gown, because we're going out on the town. You deserve the best, and that's why I want to take you to dinner as my guest. A real diamond may go from hand to hand, but the love I have for you would be the same in any land. Now that we've finished our meal, I want to show you the way I feel. Close your eyes and put out your hand. On your finger, I will place a wedding band. A real diamond may go from hand to hand, but the love I have for you would be the same in any land. I can tell by the expression on your face that this was the right time and the right place. This means that we can start a new life as Mr. and Mrs. or man and wife. A real diamond may go from hand to hand, but the love I have for you would be the same in any land. Chapter 5, The Unknown Songwriter The next night in bed, Frank told me that he wrote the Real Diamond song several years ago for his favorite singer and that he was unsuccessful because this rock star wasn't taking outside material from anyone, including him. He still kept crying. He sent the song to his lawyer, fan club, agent, and concerts by certified mail. Frank finally decided to put this song in a package with other songs that he had written for this rock star and copyright them under the heading Rock Songs, Words, and Music. This way, Frank could prove he wrote these songs. Frank, what you just told me sounds like you really know what you are doing. I think I will call you the unknown songwriter because no one knows about the songs that you wrote but me. Frank then told me that he really was glad that this rock star didn't take outside material because he liked being unknown and enjoyed his anonymity. And Marie, there is still more to tell you. Since I made up the lyrics for Real Diamond to rhyme with this rock star's name and the lyrics I wrote never happened, I decided to make the lyrics come to life by acting them out. I saved a lot of money and bought a real diamond and then I would have to find a girl to give it to. Marie, meeting you, the song did happen. I told Frank that I was very happy that he told me about this. Marie, do you want to hear more? Then I said, sure, darling. While I was writing these songs, I decided to start taking singing lessons three times a week for about a year. So I'd be able to sing the songs that I wrote. I said, you can sing too? So can I. He said, that's great. Maybe someday we can sing one of my songs in a duet. I told him, maybe we can have a session next week here in my apartment. He said, let's give it a try. A week has passed, and Frank came over with his tape recorder of the singing lessons that he took. He said, Marie, we can practice by using the lessons that I have recorded. So for a while, we were both having a lot of fun singing songs and practicing together. Then one day, Frank said to me, Marie, we're not professional singers. I think we are f should stop fooling ourselves and get on with our lives. 
I told him that I agreed that we should only sing in the shower. He laughed and said that he enjoyed writing the songs more than singing them. By the way, since we have been going together, he wrote a song for me. I asked him what was the title. He said, Marie, my baby, which he said would be a bigger hit than Real Diamond. The company I used to compose the music liked the lyrics so much, they did the music for free. I asked, do you use several companies to do the music? He said, I use George Liberace in California. He's the brother of the famous pianist Liberace. Marie, you have to be very careful who you farm your lyrics out to, because there are many song sharks out there, and they use the same music for every song. And all they want to do is to get their teeth in your wallet. Marie, how do you like the music that you heard so far from George the Baracci? I said that it sounds very good, and the singer they use also sounded good. I will bring over the song I wrote for you and let you hear it. I'll bring it over on the weekend. I'll see you then, Frankie. I couldn't wait to hear this song. He came over and played the demo for me. I couldn't believe how good it sounded. Frank said that he will write more songs about our relationship. I said that would make me happy. And he said the title of my next song will be You Make Me Happy. Then I decided, said you do make me happy. Then he said that he has been looking for a place in the neighborhood so that we could move together. I told him I go wherever you go. Frank said, I will let you know when the time is right. We kissed and he went home. Remember, folks, I am writing this story that happened over 40 years ago. I will include the lyrics to Marie, my baby, on, on the next page. Marie, my baby. When she walks down the street, she has every man at her feet. When she gives them a smile... She makes it worth their while, because that's Marie, my baby. She's got what it takes, I know, because I have to put on the brakes. From the sparkle in her eyes, until the last goodbyes. If she would ever leave me, that would bring on the cries. From the top of her head, to the bottom of her feet. You'll never find anyone as sweet as Marie, my baby. With a curl in her hair and a personality beyond compare, she's bright and out of sight. No matter what she wears, she always gets the stares. Just as the darkness signifies the night and the daytime gives you the light, I never let my girl out of sight because that's Marie, my baby. Whether sunny or rainy, windy or cold, there is a girl who's often quite bold. That's Marie, my baby. Whenever she goes, everyone knows that she's the one who always has lots of fun. Even though she doesn't have fame, she'll always be the same. Because that's Marie, my baby. Chapter 6, The Big House. I have been listening to the songs that Frank wrote so far, and I noticed that the lyrics really have meaning, and you couldn't tell when he wrote the lyrics because of the words he used. A couple weeks had passed, and Frank called me and said that the demo for You Make Me Happy has arrived, and he was going to bring it over tonight, and I said I could hardly wait. When Frank arrived, he couldn't wait to play the song for me. I listened with interest, and I couldn't believe how good the lyrics and music sounded. The lyrics was about our relationship, and Frank used words that were simple. Here's a sample of the lyrics. It goes like this. I hoped that you knew that the love I have is only for you. Even from the very start, 
I had the feeling that it was going to be hard for us to part. The reason I mention these lines here is that it did come true what he wrote over 40 years ago. Now Frank asked me, how do you like the song? I said, every song you write seems to have meaning. Being with you brings out the best in me. I said, Frank, I am flattered. When you send your lyrics to the music company, do they turn them down if they are not song material? He said, yes, but they will change a few words to make the lyrics more commercial and making sure that there isn't anything that could offend the public. I only write lyrics about good things. Frank, play You Make Me Happy Again. I really enjoyed this song a lot. Since this was a weekday, Frank told me that he would call me from work tomorrow, and then we kissed and Frank went home. The very next day, Frank called me and said that his mother sold the apartment houses, and with the money she bought a private home, only three blocks away. He also told me that he found a townhouse only three blocks from my apartment, and he wanted me to see it, and if I liked it, then we could get it before someone else did. Frank picked me up that evening, and he had the keys, and when I saw the outside, he told me that this house was built in the 1870s. When Frank opened the door, I couldn't believe what I saw. A big living room with hardwood floors, exposed brick walls, and in the center was a fireplace. I asked Frank, does it work? He said, yes. Next, there was a dining area and through a hall to the kitchen, and then through another hall was the bathroom and then a very large bedroom. Frank asked me, how did I like it so far? I said, great. Then we turned around and went out the back door to a big backyard. Frank then said that he could grow a nice garden. And I told him, no pot plants. He said, I promise to only grow vegetables. Then we went back inside, up a large staircase to the second floor with another bedroom and full bath. Now the only thing left to see was the basement. We went to the steps, the steps through the kitchen and down another stairway to the basement, which was very large and had a washer and dryer and plenty of storage space. Frank asked me, have you decided to get this place or not? I said, I really like it a lot. One more thing, he said, we have central air and heat, and the address has the same four digits as your apartment. I told Frank, now we can be together all the time and not just on weekends. Frank was happy that I liked the place as much as he did. We left, and Frank said, start packing your things, and, and he... He was going to help his mother and help his her, me move and take care of all the paperwork. Frank's mom called me and congratulated me because we got a house close to her. And she also told me that she sold the property so that Frank wouldn't have to work so hard and he could go out on his own. I told his mom that I loved her for doing what she did. We were all pretty busy for the next couple of weeks, but finally everything got moved and we were one big, happy family. I couldn't wait to start living in our new place. I kept thinking about the real diamond song that Frank wrote because now he made the song come to fruition because at the end of the song, it says that we could start a new life as Mr. and Mrs. and man and wife. The only problem now is that Frank will have to pay rent and the bills on this place. And I can I can help some because I work part time as a dental technician and I also am a seamstress. I wore the imitation real diamond everywhere I went and everybody thought it was real. And Frank had to work some weekends so I went to New York to see my friends while 
I was gone. Something bad happened. Frank came home from work about 2 a.m., and he was getting ready for bed, and he heard glass breaking. Then he got his gun and went downstairs and let this guy break in. And he held him there until the police arrived. Frank pressed charges, and the police told him the next day that this guy broke in to get the big diamond ring that I was wearing. Frank told the police that I wasn't home, and I was wearing the diamond ring in New York. The police asked him, how much was the ring worth? Frank told him, 20 Gs. But he didn't tell the police that the real diamond was in a safe deposit box in the bank. Frank told me what happened when I returned from New York. Frank told me not to flash the fake diamond ring too much because of what happened. The guy that broke in saw us in the restaurant around the corner and followed us. Frank got the window fixed and was worried about being alone after what happened. Frank contacted the landlord and paid half to have iron bars on all the windows and doors. Frank dropped the charges against the guy who broke in because he figured that this guy would not bother us anymore, and that seemed to do the trick. No more trouble. Frank told me that if this guy didn't break in, we wouldn't have the arm bars on the windows and doors. This way, when we go out on the town, we wouldn't have to worry about anybody breaking in. I like this townhouse more and more every day. Frank was working hard to keep paying the bills, and he told me that we should have credit in case we needed help with the bills. So Frank started getting credit and more credit, and he was using it to pay the gas for the car, eating out with me, groceries, car repairs. I didn't realize how much credit that Frank got. He got so much credit that he was using one credit card to pay another credit card. This went on for a while. I didn't know anything until the Postal Service broke down the doors with guns drawn and ransacked the house looking for evidence, but the, they didn't find a computer, but they found the files for all the credit cards that Frank got. After they left, Frank told me that he used false information to get all those credit cards, and they thought that he was a ringleader. I was really upset. He had a public defender, and Frank was talked into taking a plea bargain instead of a jury trial, which he could be sentenced for up to 15 years, and with the plea bargain, only about a year. Frank got sentenced for 12 to 14 months for credit card fraud and mail fraud. Since he wouldn't be working, he told me that we should pawn the real diamond to pay the rent and bills until he got back home again. This way I would use some of the money to pay on the real diamond. Frank had a very good friend at the job that helped me do shopping and things around the house until Frank returned. I talked to Frank almost every day at the camp he was at. He also wrote me a lot. Finally, the time passed and Frank was back home again. He had the job waiting for him. Everybody knew that Frank was railroaded, but the government, by the government, I am thinking of writing another book entitled Railroad to Prison. That's why I didn't go into too much detail here about this incident. Back to the current story. Frank was so sorry for what he had done, he promised me no more credit cards and that he had learned his lesson. That loan on the real diamond really saved us. So now Frank kept paying the loan back. It took about another year, and it was all paid off, and Frank put it back in the safe deposit box, and I kept wearing the fake diamond. I decided at this point of the story to add one of the many letters that Frank wrote for me from the prison camp, because he writes the letters like he went up the river to Italy instead of prison. It goes as follows. Hello, Marie, my baby. I miss you very much. It took eight days to get here. The name of the ship was the Conta Grande. These ocean liners have everything. The waiters were, waters were a little rough, but I didn't get seasick. Whenever this happens, they run velvet-covered ropes around the inside of the ship so you can hold on to when you go from one compartment to another. Cousin Eddie was waiting for me with open arms when I got off the ship in Naples. He speaks Italian fluently and knows his way around here. 
We are staying with his mother in a small cottage, and we'll be living with them as long as I'm here. They are treating me like a king. There is plenty to see here. We already saw the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the Isle of Capri, the Blue Grotto, and Mount Vesuvius Volcano. And we also went to Venice and Rome. Marie, as the saying goes, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. We passed almost every day. I put on a few pounds. Enough sightseeing for now. The real reason I'm here is to get my grandfather's inheritance, which is in the form of a house and the property it is built on. Since my mother has passed, I am the rightful heir. One of the problems with this property is that it is run down and needs a lot of repairs. The value of the property is low because of its condition. There's also a lot of back taxes owed. The government here wants to take the property over to pay the taxes. I am trying to make a deal with them. If I fix the place up with Eddie's help, I could sell it and pay the taxes and maybe have some money left. This is going to take a lot of time. Eddie knows people here who will give us all the materials we need to restore the property to its original condition. Once I get the property restored, pay the back taxes, and then and only then will I take the ship back home to your loving arms. This project had to be done now before I lost everything. I will call you when I can. I hope everything is going great for Marie, my baby. I'm getting to know my way around here. I think this would be a nice place for us to retire to. Since we've been living so long in a big city, instead of moving to another part of town, I'd rather make a big move and come back here. We'll discuss this when I come back home. This decision will be up to you. It's a nice place to live and so beautiful and crime doesn't exist here and everyone is so friendly. I think about you every day, and, and the love I have for you is getting stronger. Remember, the saying goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Love always, Frank. That was the end of one of the many letters that Frank wrote me from the prison camp. Reading this letter almost made me believe that he really was in Italy. One more thing I would like to mention here is that this was the first time in our long relationship that I wasn't with Frank on Valentine's Day. I would like to include here the poem that Frank sent me from the prison camp. It goes as follows. Even though I can't send you money, thank you for being my honey. In my heart, you will always be the same. But in your heart, I will always remain. When I'm back in your loving embrace, I promise you that I will not be in this place. Even though you can't see me now, but when you do, the cats will meow. I went on a trip up the river for a while, but when I return, you will have a big smile. For the months you don't see my face, but you will the day I'm out of this place. Pray to the heavens above that I return safe and sound with my love. When I get back, I will treat you like a queen, and things will be better when I'm back on the scene. I don't have many things to do with my time, so that's why I decided to write you this rhyme. Even though I can't be there, I would like to say I will make it up to you on next Valentine's Day. I hope you like the poem that Frank wrote me for Valentine's Day from the prison camp. I am including the lyrics for You Make Me Happy for, the, for your reading pleasure. You make me happy. As the clouds come and go, the thoughts I have for you begin to grow. I look in the sky and I think of someone who is beautiful and shy. Every breath that I take and every wish that I make. I go around with you on my mind. 
A more wonderful person would be hard to find. You make me happy the whole day through. You are just like a sunny day. When I'm with you, you make the clouds go away. But when I'm not, the happiness you've given me means a lot. You make me happy the whole day through. I hope that you knew that the love I have is only for you. Even from the very start, I had the feeling it was going to be hard for us to part. You make me happy the whole day through. We'll never have to say so long, because at the altar they'll be playing our song. After we say I do, I know that we'll be happy the whole day through. Chapter 7, Ghost in the Townhouse. I am adding this chapter to the story, which I feel has something to do with the real diamond. This occurred right after we moved into the townhouse. We didn't notice too much when we first moved in because we were working and getting settled. But after about a couple of weeks, we noticed strange things were happening. The house lights flickered every once in a while. So Frank called an electrician and he checked all the wiring and told Frank that he couldn't find anything wrong. He said that when the electric company switches grids from time to time to distribute the load, and this would cause a power surge and the lights would flicker. This explanation seemed to make sense. At night we still heard noises and Frank would get his flashlight and gun and go through the house and could find nothing wrong. We started to believe that this house could be haunted. Next day, Frank started asking questions about the history of this house. The landlord said there was no complaints about ghosts from the previous owner or other tenants that lived there before us. Things seemed to quiet down in the house for a while. Frank told me that this probably was a friendly ghost that was trying to communicate with us. So the next day, Frank asked me if I would like to go to the casino. I said yes. We had a good time and even won some money. When we arrived home, we noticed from the outside that the lights were on and that the house was cold. I asked Frank, did you leave the lights on? and forget to turn on the heat? He said no. The house was always cold. Then Frank had the heating system checked and the worker couldn't find anything wrong but suggested that we change the thermostat and we did. Again, everything was quiet. Frank decided to try and find out if anything ever happened in this house. He checked with the neighbors, and one of them said that her grandmother told her that right after the house was built in the 1870s, a couple lived there for a long time, and the wife found out that her husband was cheating on her. And when she confronted him about this, he said that he wanted to leave her for another woman. They kept fighting a lot. Frank asked the neighbor what finally happened. She said, that the husband wanted the diamond ring back that he gave her because he wanted to give it to his new love. His wife said that this ring is mine. And then after one of the fights, the husband pushed his wife down the steps and she hit her head and was killed instantly. He took the ring and gave it to the other woman. This guy never was charged with anything and the death was ruled an accident. Frank told me what the neighbor told him, and we thought there is a connection with us, because this couple was about our age, and the diamond ring was the reason that this woman was killed. Frank and I also felt that this ghost picked us because of the real diamond that Frank gave to me, to let us know that we should never leave each other for someone else. Frank told me that if we ever split up, I was to keep the real diamond 
and he would keep the fake one. Frank told me that he was going to take pictures at the place where the woman was killed. So the next day he got out his Polaroid camera, snapped several pictures through the house. As he waited for the pictures to develop, they all came up blank except for one which had an image on the right side of the print. It looked like a woman dressed in Victorian clothes. She was wearing a hat. Frank showed me the picture and I agreed with him. I noticed something else. She was standing showing her left side. I noticed that she had a large diamond ring on her left hand. And this was probably the ghost that was haunting the house. So the next day, Frank decided to take pictures of the outside of the house. But this time, all the pictures came out, since this film was new and the other film he used was outdated. He examined all the pictures and didn't seem to notice anything wrong. So when I came from work, he asked me to look the pictures over to see if I could find anything unusual. I did notice something on this picture of the front. It looked like someone was looking out the window next to the steps. Frank said that it, that is our ghost. It had to be because I was not at home when Frank took these pictures. Since we go to church a lot and light candles, I was going to ask one of the priests to bless our house. And when I told him, he said, if this is a friendly ghost, it will probably leave. The next day, our house was blessed and everything was back to normal. When I told the priest a couple of weeks later, he said that with the blessing and the fact that the ghost could rest in peace because she let you know what really happened to her. We lived in the house over 20 years and there never were no more incidents. We moved in the neighborhood to another apartment where we have been living for over 20 years. Chapter 8, Sale of the Real Diamond. After over 20 years living in the townhouse, Frank called me from work and told me that the real estate agent called him and told him that the townhouse was sold and that the buyer wanted to live there and we will have to be out in 30 days. I was shocked. Frank said, don't worry, we will work it out. That night in bed, Frank said that this might have happened for the best, and we needed a change. I asked him, where can we find a place like this? And he said that he knows this guy who comes into the store where he works, and he has properties and businesses in this neighborhood. I will call him tomorrow, and I will let you know if he has a place for us. The next day, Frank called and said, Darlene, I got good news. This guy I told you about has an apartment about three blocks away from the townhouse. Do you want to see it today? I said yes. Then I will pick you up after work. Frank told me, in the car that this apartment was small but we will have the backyard basement with a washer and dryer and it's on the first floor when we arrived the owner was waiting for us after some small talk he took us around i liked this place even though it was small frank told the owner that he will let him know as soon as possible our decision when we got home Frank asked me how did I like our new place and I said I did like it and I told him let's take it Frank asked me what made you decide to take this place I told him it is right near the church that we go to and the bank that we use is on the corner across the street and this is where the real diamond is in the safe deposit box. Frank said he was happy that I liked the place as much as he did. Since we found our new home so easy, 
will give us more time to move. The next day, Frank called me and said he finalized everything with the owner and told him that we couldn't move in until the first of next month. And he said that we could start moving our things little by little. He wasn't going to charge us until the first of next month. I told him I could fix up the basement and paint in appreciation for the free time. Then he said, would I like to be caretaker of the building? And I said, yes, sir. Marie, he also told me that he wasn't going to raise our rent as long as we live there. I said, Frank, you really got a sweet deal. Even though we are moving to a smaller place, the location and the no rent increase makes up for the difference in size. Frank said he has more things to discuss when he gets home. That night in bed, Frank was happy about the way things are working out. Since we are a little behind on some bills, he asked me, would you mind if we sold the real diamond? I said, why did you decide to do that? Frank said, this way, we can pay off some bills and have savings. I told him I really like the idea. Then he said that this way, instead of leaving the real diamond in the bank, we will have the money in our savings account. Frank, do you think we will be able to find the buyer for the real diamond? He said that he decided to sell it back to the jeweler. This way, we won't have to worry about a would-be buyer might try and pull a scam on us. And that he had asked the jeweler about this when he bought the real diamond, and the jeweler told him he would give him 10% less than the purchase price. This way the jeweler could make money on the deal. I said, Frank, you really have a lot of things to do. He said he was going to call the jeweler first thing in the morning from work. Frank called the next day and told me that the jeweler will buy the real diamond back. I said, Frank, you work fast. And he said, that way we will have more time for moving. When Frank came home from the from work, I, I said, how come you are a little late? He said that he had rushed to the bank on his lunch hour and got the real diamond from the bank and closed the safe deposit box and then rushed to the jeweler and finalized the deal and then rushed back to the bank and deposited a check from the jeweler into our savings account. He kept his word. He gave us 10% less than the purchase price. And then I went back to, to the job. I said, Frank, you really don't waste any time. He said, let's go out to eat a nice dinner at our favorite restaurant to celebrate. I got dressed in my most beautiful gown, the one I wore when Frank gave me the real diamond over 20 years ago. I was very happy right now, and so was Frank. So the next day, Frank was ready to start work on the new place. After work, he went there and started cleaning out the basement. When he came home, he told me his idea for our new place. Remember, we have a lot of things, and it was going to be hard to fit everything in our big place into the smaller place. He told me that the basement was a lot bigger, and we could put a lot of things we can't fit in the new apartment. I told him, you better get some rest. And he said, let's go to bed and get ready for another exciting day. Frank went to the new place every day after work for about two weeks. And he told me what he had gotten done so far. He cleaned everything out of the basement and swept, mopped, and painted the basement floor gray and put the owner's stuff in the front. He told me that this guy he knows was going to help him take apart the shelving from the townhouse and put them back together in the basement of the new place. And once that was done, he moved everything that was on the shelves in the townhouse basement to the new place. Finally, Frank got everything from the townhouse basement to the new place basement, plus a lot of things from the rest of the house that we weren't using. 
Mayor, our townhouse was about three quarters moved with time to spare. I haven't seen the new place since the day we first went there. Frank didn't want me to see the new place until the last thing was moved. Finally, everything got moved, and Frank told me to see, took me to see our new home. I couldn't believe how he fit everything in this small place. He put everything down the basement that didn't fit upstairs in the apartment. He had everything in boxes, marked and neatly stacked, and all the pictures and other wall decorations stacked vertically in wooden racks that he made. He used every possible space. He only left just enough space to get around to access the washer and dryer. That night in bed, Frank asked me how did I like everything. I was so happy the way everything turned out. I was so used to everything that it was almost like we didn't even move. Frank kept his word with the owner and fixed up the house for over the next 20 years. Frank did everything you could think of. He painted the inside of the house three times and the outside windows and doors. He put carpeted stair treads on all the steps, including the basement. He put paintings in the hallway and vestibule and wall mirrors on each floor and other artwork that he bought over the years. Every inch of wall space was filled. Most of this stuff was what didn't fit in our apartment. Frank also painted our apartment several times, which made it look better than it did when we first moved in. He also collected rents. He kept the front of the house clean and backyard and took out the trash. He shoveled snow and whatever needed to be done to maintain the property. The owner was so pleased with us, he wanted to put us in his will. Of course, this was just a gesture of appreciation. Can you imagine what it's like not having a rent increase for over 20 years and don't have to worry about moving unless we wanted to? I guess you could say that this was the house that Frank built. One more thing, when we first moved in here, I asked Frank to pick one of the songs that he wrote when we first start going together. He thought for a moment and said, the song I wrote over 20 years ago would be Peace of Mind. I said, let's play it now. He went in his collection and he played the song and it still sounded just as good as it did when he first wrote it. Frank then looked at me and said, Marie, my baby, I hope that this song comes true and we will have peace of mind and live happily ever after in our new home. This song so far has come true and we are living out our lives and our love is just as strong as ever. We may be a little older and grayer now, but we still have each other and that proves that if it wasn't for the real diamond song that Frank wrote, we probably would have never met and our lives would have turned out different. That's why I wrote this story and I believe in destiny. I hope that the reader enjoyed the story as much as I did writing it. I would like to wish everyone peace of mind from Frank and Marie. The lyrics of peace of mind that Frank wrote over 40 years ago is as follows. Peace of mind. Everywhere that you go, and even places that you don't even know, you can go to a mountaintop, or just pay a visit to your mom and pop. Peace of mind is hard to find. In the crisis that we face every day, it's tough to put your mind at ease. But if you do find solace for a moment, you'll be the one that you'll please. Peace of mind is hard to find. Everybody is one of a kind, and we're all trying to find peace of mind. You think of the things that you have to do, and you find out there are quite a few. Peace of mind is hard to find. If you're lost, and you can't find your way, whether it's for a week or just for a day, and when you finally get back on the right track, you won't even want to go back. Peace of mind is hard to find. You can look under a rock or just go from block to block. 
You can take an ocean voyage to a faraway land, or just hold each other's hand. Peace of mind is hard to find. If I could make just one wish, it would be for mankind, that everybody everywhere would have peace of mind. Chapter 9, Final Thoughts Frank and I have been together for over 40 years. During the first 20 years, everything dramatic and exciting seemed to happen. But during the next 20 years, our lives have been complacent. I could have written a story 20 years ago, and it would have been exactly the same as the story that I wrote now. I didn't mention in the story that Frank showed me photos of the pot plants because he didn't show them to me until after we moved into the small place. I asked him, why are you showing me these pictures now? He said that he couldn't find them until now. These pictures showed Frank in jeans with a dark beard in his mom's backyard surrounded by the tomato and pot plants. Who took these pictures? He said that the guy he bought the pot from. Was your mom there? He told me that he brought this guy over to meet his mom several times. Who did you tell your mom this guy was? Marie. I told her that he was my best friend and he got me the job as a movie theater manager. My mom liked this guy a lot. She even invited him to dinner with us. Frank, when did he take the, pic the snapshots? On one of the visits. I told my mom I wanted to show him my tomato plants, and this was right before we disposed of the evidence. We still have these photos which verifies the part of the story about the pot plants. I didn't mention Frank's jobs because he had so many over a 40 year period, it would have taken another book just to describe the things that he did. Most of his jobs were in management. He also had his own antique store. The trouble with Frank's jobs was that he didn't get paid enough, but he sure had jobs that were fun for him. Most of his jobs were in the neighborhood. Since this is a true story, a lot of things can be verified. Frank has demos, sheet music, and copyrights for the songs that I mentioned here. The stolen car part of the story can be verified because Frank still has the newspaper articles that were written by the reporter that was on the scene when Frank caught the car thief. The ghost in the townhouse can be verified because Frank still has the two photos that he took. Frank still has the bill for the iron bars that was put on the windows and doors after the guy broke in. While Frank was paying his debt to society, he called me and wrote me a lot of letters, which I still have. When Frank sent me the letters, he sent me two at a time, one from the prison camp and one he made up about Italy. The guy who broke into the house was following us all the time, but we didn't have a clue. He was attracted by the big diamond I was wearing everywhere. He thought it was real. This part of the story happened after we cleansed the house of the friendly ghost. I want to clear something up. We never saw a ghost or an apparition, but we did experience strange events which we thought at first was the result of an aging house. Frank used outdated film which captured an image of our ghost which we decided that the ghost wanted us to see, which made Frank investigate with the neighbors and found out what happened. This gave us closure and the ghost could now rest in peace. I would like to let you know about Frank's songwriting. Before we met, he wrote a lot of lyrics and only put the ones he liked to music. 
The songwriting stopped after Frank met me. The songs he wrote had meaning, and we still listen to his songs all the time. Our favorite song, you guessed it, is Real Diamond. One more thing. I am writing this story at the present time. We are both living on Social Security and Medicare. We are still in pretty good shape since Frank had open heart surgery a few years ago and I have had both knees replaced. We've outlived most of our family. My niece Olga has encouraged me to write this novel and has helped me in making the story come to fruition. This finalizes the book. Headed in the right direction But it would be better if you stayed put And strive for perfection Don't let yourself go too far Whether you're rich Or whether you're not Remember you're as young as Exercise to keep yourself thin The more you do it, the easier to begin If you like to run, then get into shape Ought to be fun Don't let yourself go to bars Whether you're rich Or whether you're not
This was the right time and the right place. This means we can start a new life. As Mr. and Mrs. Old Man and Wife. Have to think. She'll always be the same because 